Hello fellow chess players. We have now arrived at problem number 10 in the Soviet series and the position is right in front of you. And uh, this is white to play and draw. This is the only draw in this series of one dozen problems. So it's a bit different to the others in the sense that you know that you can't win this game unless black made a mistake but the premise is that it will be drawn. Now there are many ways that you can draw a game and the ones that will be familiar to most people, of course the stalemate, a familiar theme in these problems, the way that I'm looking at it anyway, and the draw by repetition, threefold repetition in fact, and then the game can be considered to be drawn. However, you need the cooperation of the opponent in this, and, and I'm quite sure that that is not the way that the problem solvers devised this particular one, or indeed any other problem solvers would want a draw to result from their endeavours. So we, we can rule that one out, I think. You can also rule out the 50 moves rule, and insufficient material, say where you had a, a king against king, or king with just a pawn, on either side perhaps, or king and pawn against king, or bishops of opposite colour. You can certainly rule out all that because there was just too much material. And then finally the perpetual check. I think most people would agree that of all of those it's, it's likeliest that it would be the perpetual check, and indeed that proved to be so in my analysis. Just a, a quick look though at, at two points. Firstly the material on both sides as can be seen, white has slightly more material, although not really, because if you do a head count, the points are exactly the same. They each have a queen and rook, white has a bishop, and black has three pawns. So there's no great difference. What are we looking at here? Nine for a queen, five for a rook, that's 14 and three. So it's about 17 points on both sides. What I would say, though, is, as you will notice, is that white's rook is all pre's, and so is white's bishop. But Black's king is stuck away in the corner. It looks as though it could be a target. I know what I said just a moment ago about a, a stalemate. Uh, it's unlikely that you, you would get a stalemate in this position. Although I'm of the, the sort of disposition who tends to look around for possibilities either to avoid a stalemate principally because most people don't want to fall into one, but where you can clearly see that you'd be on the losing side it is much better to force a stalemate, evidently, isn't it? So just looking at this position here, I did play around with the notion that perhaps it might be possible to contrive a stalemate situation. And if you look at uh, White's Queen on A6, if you were to put that on C4 and allow Black to take it, let's just move over to the, the practical board here for a moment. This, in fact, would be the, the final move in the series of moves in order to contrive the stalemate. But I'm just wanting to show that that is the stalemate position if white didn't have the rook and the bishop. You would agree because the king cannot go here. It cannot go here because of the pawn, the queen, and the queen again. So that would absolutely be a stalemate. And then, of course, what White would have in mind is to play something like this. Of course, all this can be ruined if the Queen came in. But in practical play, you might be able to wangle it by doing something of this order. And then maybe the Rook comes down and the King takes it. And then you go here and the King takes that. And it's, oh dear, it's a stalemate. You see what I mean? But in in practical play, you might be able to, to wangle something like that, but I'm quite sure that the, the problem solvers didn't have in mind anything remotely like that. So you can rule it out. So what we'll do is, I've just demonstrated a bit of fun, I think, more than anything else. And my hobby horse of stalemates uh, did come into play a, a little bit there. So that's the bit of fun over. Now we'll get down to the real business of seeing if we can in fact find a solution to this. I believe I have. We'll just make sure that we have the, the correct position there again. Yeah, that is. Hang on. White Queen needs to go back. Yeah. 
going to be to take him off didn't, or her off. So let's just check that one out. Yeah, that looks okay. Right. Now, what immediately uh, occurs to anyone, I suppose, is when once we recognise, and we have, I think, that it is going to be a perpetual check that is, is White's aim, White would be looking at perhaps at bringing the Queen down here, thinking, oh, well, that, you know, we might be able to, to cause him a few problems there. So just take a look at that for a moment. And what could we gain from this? It looks pretty threatening, doesn't it? I think you'd agree. Black is in check. He, he has two choices here. He can either interpose his rook or he can move his king. Well, let's let's try interposing the rook. What what would happen then? The king is protected there. White cannot checkmate on g2. And his own queen is threatened. So don't forget this rook is on pre. So probably what White may want to do here is to to take this off. The problem is black could go like this and he's threatening to queen this pawn next move. Of course white can take this queen but then the queen is renewed and then it would be a queen and rook against queen and bishop and I don't think there's any doubt that, that black would be able to win that one. So we'll put the, the rook back. On the other hand, instead of taking with the queen, let's take with the rook. And that removes the on priest position here. What what happens then? Well, of course, it can be removed. Could take the queen and take the rook. And that will be rook against bishop, and this pawn would probably have no trouble queening. So if you take the, the rook off, like that, in fact, the queen could just come down and, and take it. And then white really is left with no option but to take this queen. And then this pawn wouldn't have any trouble at all in queening because it's a dark square, not a light square, so the bishop couldn't stop it. So that really doesn't work. So that interposing doesn't work. So really, you needn't consider anything else, because in reply to queen f1, black would certainly interpose. We'll just have a quick look at the, the king move, for curiosity's sake. Get it right. There we go. Right. So I did say that the queen would move down here. Now, if black were to go there, that would probably be better for white. I think interposing is, is undoubtedly the correct move. There's, there's no immediate checkmate in the corner, but what does it occur, of course, is that white could play here. And then you are really looking at a problematic situation because 
yeah, white, white would be winning this game. So there's, there's certainly no draw there. So that doesn't meet the criteria of the problem. Uh, but interposing the rook would, would undoubtedly win for black. Moving the king, it looks to me at least as though you, you'd he'd take this and you'd have a an interesting situation where more than likely this queen would be able to uh, pick up this pawn. It, it would certainly be a, an interesting finish. I think white would have the winning of it on the basis of how I'm looking at it, but uh, what we'll do is we'll assume that queen f1 is not the move. So what we'll jump into in a moment is what I believe to be the key move. It is a queen move, uh, and it more or less forces black into a number of lines that will, as I see it, bring about the, the desired result. So we'll just pop all these back again. And the queen down here. Yeah, that's okay. Right, so if you want to pause the video and think how white can deal with this, it wouldn't gain anything by checking here, for instance, because the queen would just whip it off. So I, I think process of elimination is that it would have to be queen to c6 check, which is down here. Right, now black has at his disposal Four replies to this, and um, we'll just go through them. So there are interpositions and king moves. The first is by playing rook to f3. That stops the check. So what good does this do? Well, the black rook is pinned, of course, by the white queen. which is advantageous from White's point of view. So what White can do here is he can capitalize on the fact that the rook is pinned by playing rook takes f2. And what he's threatening at once, of course, is queen c1. Checkmate. He's covering the first rank and the second rank, so and nothing can interpose, so that's fine. So Queen C six is pretty useful for that. So how does Black respond to Rook takes F two? Can't touch the rook. So if, if he were to play here, unpinning, shall we say, then white can play rook takes f3. And what I would say about this is that that is useless for black unless black can deliver a perpetual check, in which case white wins. And by the looks of it, I would say that that is a winning position for white because he has a rook and bishop. Now, this pawn is, is not going to do much here, and this pawn can probably be caught. In fact, black would probably find himself in a mating net. I don't know that black has enough material there to deliver a perpetual. He might have, but uh, it's certainly not a, a guaranteed perpetual, so I, I think that is out the question. So rook interposing doesn't work for what we want here, which is a perpetual check, a guaranteed perpetual check. So what else do we have here? Just take a look at it. After queen c6 check. Okay. 
Well, you can interpose the queen like that. And that stops the check. So what is the reply to that? Well, white's queen is pinning black's queen. And this is a nuisance, so black can get out of the all free situation and give check. Rook b1 check. What does black do to that? Well, if he plays here, white can go here. So black would retake, of course. But then white can go here. And as can be seen in that move, he is stopping the f pawn from queening. The rook is no longer attacked. And so we have rook and bishop against rook and three pawns. So the material is still even, but with queens off the board, it's looking as though matters are a little bit unclear. So a2 threatening the rook. So the rook goes into the corner threatening to recapture. There are possibilities of black checking along here, but the king could probably escape eventually. So we won't bother with that. What I would have in mind is king to g1 going after this bishop, wanting it to move and perhaps trying to queen the pawn. But before we look at that, Let's just have a look at this. This is an interesting move here. Wanting to play rook e1 here. And of course, if black were to take, then white were to take, black would recapture and queen the pawn. So what he does instead is he plays here. And then Black goes here, and then white goes here. And that is easily a draw, because white would be more than happy to sacrifice his bishop for this pawn here. And then we'd have a rook against rook, and white should have no trouble in picking up that pawn. So it would be king and rook against king and rook. So that, that would certainly be a draw, there's no doubt about that. So just to go back to uh, the position for a moment, just let's let's put the position back as it was and have another look at it. Not an easy one, a draw, because there are so many possibilities where you're not quite sure whether you have it right or not. But. Uh, that's always the case, whether it's a draw or particularly with a draw, because you, you are really having to, to do something that is not quite the same. It's, it's rather different to where you're wanting to try and play for a win. So just make sure that we have the position correct again. And we do. Let's just go back to queen c6. And he interposed with the queen to f3. And I did say... Rook B1 check. And then King to H7. And 
queen takes f3 and rook takes f3 and bishop f1 a2 I think this is the main line where black interposes his queen to f3 so instead of rook e3 black plays king to g1 you take on a2 No, let me just backtrack for a moment. You play bishop e to check, of course. This is taking advantage of the fact that black king is in check and you're attacking the rook. But he plays here. But instead of taking the rook and then giving just to demonstrate, if he were to make the mistake of taking the rook and then black recaptured, white would end up losing for the simple reason that the king can eventually come around. Let's just have another look at that. If he were to play here, for instance, then he queens the pawn. So the rook is tied to the back rank. So that, that would definitely be a loss for white. But doing it this way, you have to be a little bit... Sneaky again. Right. That's it. So bishop b2, check. King g2, you check him again. And that's a, a draw by perpetual check because black can make no real headway he doesn't want to lose this pawn he doesn't want this blocked all the time so he has to really do something about it if he if he moves to here for instance then white just whips off the pawn and i think it's pretty obvious that that, that can be drawn so i think what you would say is that with either rook f3 or queen f3 there are possibilities to draw it all white, maybe even to win with the rook interposing. So that proves that with either of those, you can obtain a draw. I wouldn't say that either of those interpositions would constitute the main line, but it's it's part of the analysis. Let's put it that way. So let's let's put this back. We, we've gone through two variations there, and there are two more. So. That position is correct. Yeah, queen c6, check. We've interposed the rook and we've interposed the queen. Now, the king has two moves. It can either go to g1 or it can go to h3. g2, of course, is out because of the bishop. So let's try g1 as our third choice. Well, quite simply, white plays rook b1. It, that's always going to, to be the, the main idea that white has to break the attack on the rook and to utilize the back rank check to keep the perpetual in mind. So after rook b1, black is forced there, more or less, to play this. I don't think he'd want to play here somehow because I think I'm right in saying, just let me, yes, Queen h1 mate. That's that is the beauty of playing queen to c6 because you can home in on this h1 square. It's not nearly as good from here, of course. You you want to do it down the diagonal and that works to a treat. So that will be checkmate. So he has no option after having played king g1, which is a mistake, of course, but we have to go through it. So after queen c3 check, king g1, sorry, queen c6 check. King g1, rook b1 check, he promotes to a queen. What happens then?
Can you see anything? Well, evidently, rook takes f1, and the queen is attacked. Now, we've just demonstrated that the king can't move out of the way because it would be queen h1 mate. So, black would have no option but to take that, and then the bishop would take the queen. And ostensibly, that is a, a win for white. I don't think there's any doubt about that because white would have no trouble picking up this pawn. So that is a loss if black were to play king g1, so we can rule that one out. So the only move that's left after queen c6, by way of a reply for black, that's it, yep. Yeah. So you play queen c6, check, he has to play king h2, and this is where I, I would say that one is a possible win after rook f3, or that could be a perpetual, but it's certainly not a win for, for black. After interposing the queen to f3, it's probably a draw by perpetual. After king g1 is definitely a loss for black. So I think this, this is the main line where white can force the perpetual and black has to accept it. So king h2, white plays rook b1. He's not giving check on this, but he is moving out of this attack from the pawn. And he's also threatening on the move queen h1 mate, as we just demonstrated a moment ago on the king g1 variation. So black doesn't want to go there. What does he do? There are two variations at this point. In fact, there are three variations, but uh, yeah, three variations. Well, the first one that springs to mind is the queen going to h5, giving check in line with the perpetual. It can't check here because of the white queen taking it. And it can't check here because of the bishop. So this, this is the pretty obvious move of queen h5 check. So the king moves to a4. So white is threatening checkmate on h1, don't forget. So what happens here? Well, if queen takes h3, then queen h1 mate. So that's no good. And many might say, well, the black queen could continue to give white check. Well, it could, but that would just demonstrate that it is in fact a perpetual. If, if white could not get out of it, then you don't need to bother yourself too much about that. White is threatening mate on the move, so black would have to keep checking in, in order to avoid mate on the move. We've just demonstrated that if you take the, the bishop on h3, it would be mate. So what happens after rook takes h3? Well, white plays rook h1. And the king has no option there but to go to g3. And the key move here is queen c3. And I've put this to the test, and no matter where the king moves, it is a perpetual. Quite simply, if he moves along, you, you can just keep checking. There's, there's nothing that can be done. For instance, also, if, if he comes here, into, we have this in, interposition theme. Queen f3, that would prove to be a mistake because white can just do that. And black would have to take the rook and then white would take the queen and white would end up winning that position. So that, that would not be a, a suitable choice at all. So just for the moment, we'll, we'll put this back so that we can redo it.
Okay, and that's the starting position. We played Queen C3 check. And he's played King H2. And we've played Rook B1 threatening mate with Queen H1. And I did say there were three variations, so this, we're still on with this one just for the moment. Queen H5 check, King A4. And we've demonstrated that Black could perpetual check, so that's that's fine. So I think really there's nothing to be gained by checking, only one more move. So I think what we'll do at this point is we'll just put it back to that and we'll look at the other two variations. Instead of queen h4 check, what about rook takes h3? And of course that would stop the mate in the corner because then the king has a flight square. But white plays rook h1 anyhow. And again, we have a similar situation. King goes to g3. And we repeat queen c3. This, this is the beauty of queen c6. We want queen c3. This is the key move on top of a key move so that we can control these ranks and give perpetual. And then, of course, if king f4... then there's no reason why we just can't carry on. Don't forget there's rooks hanging here. This pawn's under attack. That pawn's not going anywhere because black is going to be checked. Alternatively, after king f5, you could just take the rook at once, like that. And this pawn cannot queen here because it's under attack. This one is being threatened anyhow. I, I think what that would demonstrate is that white would certainly have a, a win, probably. But a draw would not be impossible by any means. So that uh, rook h3 is either a loss or a draw. So we'll just take it back to the, the start and give the one final variation in this. Let's make sure that we have this absolutely right. That's the starting position. And white played to here. to here and play rook b1 so it's we've we've had a look at queen h5 check we've had a look at rook h3 don't forget white is threatening mate on the move in h1 this is this is what's so good about moving to here because it has here it has c3 and it has the important square of h1. Black has no time for, for this because quite clearly if he did push this pawn on the rook is here to take it and attacking the queen. So that, that would certainly I would say be a win for white given that there's no time to take this because the queen's under attack. Yes of course he could push it, take it, check and then the rook could interpose. So I think white would definitely have certainly have winning chances there but there's no question of white losing, so it would either be a winner or a draw. So that, that wouldn't work. So after queen c6, check, king h2, rook b1. We tried queen h5, check. We tried rook h3. What about king h3 now as the final variation in this? I'd say that this is probably the main variation here. Well, I looked at this for a long time and I decided that queen h6 check is probably the strongest move. Now, you can't interpose there because you just take it. 
So really the king has two choices. He can either come back to, here we go, you're flying around. You can either go back to G2 or you can go to G4. Let's try King G2 first. Well, clearly that doesn't work because It's Queen H1 mate. Now that's rather nice. So Black certainly wouldn't want to do that. So he's forced, really. This is what is good about Queen H6. This is this is yet another string to the bow, I suppose you could say, as well as eyeing over C3, C1, H1. The Queen H6 move does more or less at this stage force. King to g4. So let's have a look at that. Then, of course, white can play rook b4 check. And as can be seen, white is going to have no difficulty at all in keeping up the checks here. If he should play here, which would be a mistake, then white can win with rook f4 and pick up the queen and also stop that. So that, that would not be acceptable at all. So after king g4, king f5 is out. And if he plays this way, of course, well, you just repeat. He's gone there, right? King g4, rook b4. He can't go back to here. He can't go here. He can't go here. He can not. He can go here. We've just demonstrated that rook f4 wins. He can't go here because of the rook and the queen. So the only other squares to f3, king f3. And then white can play back to c6. Interposing the queen would be of no use. And so then. You're controlling the fourth. You're controlling this h1 to a8 diagonal. So you're, you're really forcing the king to come around here. King d6. And really, there we, we do have a perpetual. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Because what I'd have in mind is probably playing something like queen to here, check, and he'd play to here. And then the queen is attacked, so you, you'd probably, you couldn't put the rook here because of the pawn. So you, you'd have to probably check him like this. Like that. And he'd come here. And so you'd come here. <laughs> and of course you'd repeat moves if he went that way. And if he went this way, then you can always move along these sorts of lines again. If he goes to the back rack this time, you can play rook b1 check. I think you'd, you'd undoubtedly have a perpetual. See, even if he interposed such as like this, you could probably go here and, and that would also achieve the same objective. I mean, if he went along here, you, you'd probably end up mating him. It's just a case of keep moving the pieces around and I don't think there's any doubt about it that an exhaustive analysis is probably necessary but impractical for, for going through... Uh, a process like this. We're already at the 40 minute stage. I think we've demonstrated here that that, that is undoubtedly the, the correct way of doing it. I do hope you've enjoyed this game. It has been a convoluted affair, but I, I think we have uh, done it the way that the uh, the problem setters would, would want us to try and solve such a, a problem. I'd say that uh, you couldn't do it any better than that. I hope you've enjoyed this one. The next two will be a little bit less uh, complicated. 
they're both uh, white to play and win. And I have had a good look at them and uh, I think I've sold them both. So we'll come back to those in due course and enjoy your chess. And when you can't win, of course, try and draw. You can always try and play for the draw. And it, it's not a, an easy matter at all. I, I know that the late Dr. Max Erva, I've mentioned him a few times in these videos, he once said that at the end of his 1937 World Championship match against uh, Dr. Alekhine, that he bemoaned the fact that there was a total absence of a drawing technique in his armory. And so a great player like that, it, such an admission that he didn't have a drawing technique, I think it tells you that you really do need to have that drawing technique because a lot of games that could be saved end up being lost. And that's what he said in his match. He drifted into losing positions where he should have held the draw. So I hope I've held the draw here. And I think that uh, we can consider this one solved. So thank you very much indeed for watching and enjoy your chess and goodbye for now.